pressure on the Imperial fleet. Our bombers need a clear passage in order to bring the Star Destroyer down. What's up, YouTube fam? Today I'm bringing you 4K 60 FPS gameplay. <laughs> Who's gonna be able to watch this? <laughs> anyway, I'm bringing you 4K 60 FPS gameplay of Star Wars Battlefront, and it looks ridiculously good. If you're part of our YouTube family, you know I've been wanting to make a video like this for a while. A video that is just about the insane graphics of this game. And I figured, what better place to start than with my favorite DLC for Star Wars Battlefront based off of my favorite Star Wars movie, A New Hope. And for me, this DLC really delivers. We've got gorgeous space battles. The best looking space battles I've ever seen. Aside from Star Citizen, the interior of the Death Star and the Trench Run. And all of those things in one single game mode, regardless the beauty that you're seeing is all in-game settings cranked up to maximum, even TAA. And native 4K 60fps resolution is what we're recording at and playing at. And I'm playing with the HUD off for the entire video. And most of the video, like 90%, is in first person. Just a few choice clips, like the Falcon taking out TIE Fighters left and right around this Star Destroyer. That is in third person, but most of it is in immersive first person, and it looks really, really good. But, don't play with the HUD off. It's not a good idea. It's really difficult to do. <laughs> they really need to add a crosshairs only option. Although, I would probably still be recording with no crosshairs for the purposes of videos like this. Because it just, it's the way to do it. It looks so good, man. Anyway, the game mode that I'm playing in, in the entire video practically, is Battle Station. And right now, you're seeing Stage 2, the interior of the Death Star, which could be one of a few different maps. It's not the same map every time you play Battle Station. It's a few different ones. And I think that that's great. The maps not only look good, but they also feel good. They have the right feel to them. It doesn't feel like a theme park, even though they've got tons of references to the original Death Star and even Death Star 2. It doesn't feel like a theme park. It doesn't feel like Reference City. Even though all these different references should really technically be miles apart from each other in some cases, it still fits, and the maps don't only look good. They are also really balanced for gameplay. I would say this is the most chaotic DLC, even more so than the Outer Rim. The, the cramped hallways, I don't know, it, it makes it super intense when you try to go after objectives. Also, I really like the fact that the horizon of the Death Star actually has a curve when you're over the trench run, because this is a giant, planet-sized super weapon. It, it's not just a flat plane. It's subtle, but it's there. I also appreciate all the various ships in the space battle. You have some uh, rebel ships, obviously, imperial ships, but also... What's Admiral Akbar's race? Oh god, can I think of it? Can I think of it? Uh, Admiral Akbar is a fish. Mm, no, he is a... Oh god, a million comments by now already tell me what it is. Oh, what is he? Oh, Mon Calamari! You got Mon Calamari ships firing on the Star Destroyers. It's a nice touch. Exposed subsystem. Let's take this destroyer down. Something I find endlessly fascinating is if you look at Battlefield 4 compared to Battlefront, there is a huge difference in graphics, and Battlefield 4 is a good looking game. But there is a huge leap in visual fidelity in Battlefront. I think some, getting that Star Wars IP, something about getting that Star Wars license really made DICE get their butts in gear and make games or visuals and games to the best of their abilities and they really stepped it up. It's impressive what they're able to do with lighting and visual effects. 
particle effects, explosive effects. It looks incredible. Not just this Death Star DLC, but the entire game, obviously. Outdoors, they were able to nail indoors, space battles, aerial battles over enormous planes. Endor, Tatooine, Sullust. All of these remote locations that are completely different from one another. Even the sterile, very industrial look of the interior of the Death Star. They all work. It makes me really happy that DICE has said that more maps are going to be added to Skirmish, the offline mode for Star Wars Battlefront, including DLC maps in the future. Eventually, all maps should be in Skirmish depending on the game mode. I want nothing more than to be able to sit on my couch in front of my projector, playing on a 120-inch screen, the events of A New Hope, the Death Star Trench Run, the interior of the Death Star. That is what I want. Obviously, playing with the HUD off with a controller <laughs> on the PC version of Battlefront is not necessarily a good idea unless you're playing with bots, so fingers crossed that that comes sometime soon. I love the greebling, by the way, for the trench run. It's seriously impressive, but you don't just have greebling in detail on every nook and cranny of the trench run. You also have it on Imperial Star Destroyers. Bosk and Chewie themselves, the new heroes for the DLC, look great, except I do have a few qualms with Chewie. I feel like his fur is just a little too reflective in some areas. It needs to be super reflective in the face, because that's what it looks like in the movies, but there's a little too much aliasing, a little too much reflectivity, not enough transparency mapping on the fur. I am almost positive that's going to be fixed in the future. Uh, in fact, yes, I am going to say that's going to be fixed in the future. It's just difficult to get that stuff right. It's a really difficult thing to do. So once they figure out how to do it, I have no doubts that they're going to add that in a patch at some point, add that for improvement at some point. <laughs> that cracks me up every time. It just looks so comfy. Okay, this is gonna sound a little fanboy, but it is so cool seeing Darth Vader and Palpatine scurrying across the Death Star, killing rebel forces. I just wish that we had Ben Kenobi in this DLC. If nothing else, when you're playing in Luke's Red 5 X-Wing, doing the trench run, if you're at the last home run stretch of the trench run, I want Ben Kenobi to talk to Luke and, and say is like, Use the force, Luke. Let go, Luke. I think that that would be great. Behind you. The fighters making their attack run have been neutralized. Very good. Maintain pursuit. Something else you've probably been noticing are the B-Wings and TIE Bombers and TIE Defenders and Y-Wings that are flying around the map. No, you can't fly in them. They tried to make it happen, but development is difficult. Game development is not easy, and making pilotable ships and balance them with all the others is extremely difficult. Anyway, they were able to put them in the game, thankfully, as pickups. So, when you're flying around the various maps of the Death Star DLC, you can find B-Wing, Y-Wing, TIE Defender, and TIE Bomber pickups that will follow you around. You'll have a couple TIE Wings. TIE Wings. <laughs> yeah, maybe in Episode 8. Anyway, you'll have a couple uh, TIE Bombers, for example, following you around, shooting enemies that come into your proximity. And they're actually pretty good. They're not useless whatsoever. They will probably take down one or two fighters at least when you get one of those pickups. And I think that's great. I do not think that they need to be nerfed.
The Millennium Falcon and Boba Fett are no longer the only heroes in aerial combat. You now have the TIE Advanced X-1 and Luke Skywalker's Red 5 X-Wing that you can fight as. But I think that they're only available in the Death Star DLC. I don't think that they're available to play as in any of the other Fighter Squadron maps, which I guess makes sense, especially for Darth Vader's TIE Advanced, because you don't see Darth Vader's TIE Advanced anywhere except for the Death Star. And Luke Skywalker doesn't really fight in his Red 5 X-Wing outside of the space battles, so... It didn't quite dawn on me until watching this footage just how excited I am to play in the Millennium Falcon in the sequel trilogy Force Awakens Battlefront next year. Oh, that's gonna be sweet. I, I, I really hope that they have that desert map. I don't know why they would actually now that I think about it, but if only as a training map, if they have that, uh, that, that desert map on Jakku with Nima Outpost and the Millennium Falcon flying around with those uh, first Order TIE Fighters. I, I want that. I need it. I want it. I need it. Please give it to me. This is such a sweet looking ship. Man, there's going to be a revolt. Let me tell you. There's going to be a, a rebellion against Disney if they destroy the Millennium Falcon. Damn, that looked cool. If they destroy the Millennium Falcon in Episode 8 or 9, people are going to freak out. They are going to freak. They are not going to be happy. Speaking of Millennium Falcon, are we going to get... Lando Calrissian and Han Solo playing space cards or space poker in the young Han Solo anthology movie that we're getting. Is that going to be a thing? That would be so insane if that actually happened. That is how Han got the Millennium Falcon anyway. I mean, he, he won it from Lando. Fair and square in a card. Well, maybe not fair and square. Anyway, he won it from Lando in a card game, which is cool. They've also revamped Stormtroopers. I like the fact that they're willing to change. DICE changed Stormtroopers to be the shiny, glossy finish that they had in Empire and also uh, uh, Return of the Jedi instead of the matte Stormtroopers that they wore on Tatooine. I believe if you are playing on Tatooine maps, they're going to be matte, but anything else like Bespin or the Death Star DLC, they're going to be shiny, which is great because it's accurate. I love accuracy. Also, you can't take off your helmet anymore. Thank you, Dice! Thank you! No more helmetless stormtroopers! Captain Phasma would be so proud. Anyway, I'm gonna leave you guys to enjoy both the audio and the video of Star Wars Battlefront. So, if you guys are big fans of Star Wars or just big fans of gaming, we're big fans of both. We make all kinds of gaming live streams, videos on the Star Wars movies, on Star Wars news, on the games. So, I hope to see you in our fam. I hope to see you in our streams. But until next time, the Force will be with you always.